But what about somebody telling you that uh, in each of uh, these leaders' country, if you looked at their constitution, for example, that, that piece of document, you will definitely find reflections of democracy because you will find the three branches of government. You will find the executive, you will find the judiciary, you will find the legislature. And every one of those institutions report to and is run by and equals mm -hmm. that one person, the president. And that is the issue. But when, how, does, uh, how does an individual really suddenly have gathers all that power to control all these millions and millions of people? Isn't well, there something it, fundamentally wrong with perhaps us as African citizens? There, there is something wrong with... Do we know whether we are citizens or whether we are subjects? Because frankly, if you are a citizen, you know that you are entitled to inalienable rights, almost birthrights, really. There's, some call them constitutional rights. Um, and all you need to do is to organize and mobilize and assert your rights, because these people you are talking about, in fact, are your employees. It, look at... Um, they are not your bosses. Mm -hmm. But it can, they can only be your bosses if you have decided to behave as a subject. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a subject, it means you owe your allegiance to an individual authority. You have no rights except you have privileges which can be granted to you by that individual authority. He could be a Kabaka, he could be Umwami, a king, he could be the Sadona, he could be the Emir, he could be the presidential monarch, you will name it, he could be that. Isn't, is, there, is there no danger that we Africans really, for the most part, we have somewhat surrendered our rights and behave as if we are subjects and we are expecting perhaps and waiting for some sort of political manner from Washington, Paris, London? I, I think it's twofold. One is the reason why these leaders are so powerful is because of the support from outside, like our tax dollars again. And um, but, but we have they, gone through they, a series that, of that. That's one. There was colonialism. I'll give it's you, gone. I'll give you yeah? three examples. Why can't we liberate really ourselves? Three examples. Mm. A few years ago when Congo went to the polls, people went to demonstrate in the streets and the military shot them. People were shot. If that had happened in a Western country, look at Russia and, uh, and, and Ukraine and, and what's going on there. There would have been sanctions against the government of Congo. In Uganda, during the elections, people were trying to uh, gather, get together. They would round them up, put them in those minibuses, and pepper spray them tear in gas. their faces, tear gas them inside those minibuses. In Rwanda, right before the election, there was a demonstration organized. The organizer of the demonstration just got released this year, four years later, for organizing a demonstration. You can talk about that Egypt. is a right. Yeah, look at Egypt, where um, basically a people's revolution was overtaken by the military with all of this, and, and all of it with mostly support from money that we are contributing. That is a major factor. Without the outside support, the people on the inside are totally responsible for their own destiny. But until the outside support, which is why we want to hold the U.S. government accountable as U.S. citizen, is so that the people on the inside can hold their own destiny in their own hands.